Hey, welcome back guys. So after making the 200 days in Terraria Master Mode video, I made a poll on what my next video should be. And about 51% of you guys voted on For the Worthy, so that's what this video is going to be about. I did however play this in Classic Mode, since I wasn't sure how hard it was going to be. But I'm actually glad I chose Classic first. This seed is definitely much harder than Master difficulty, so I'm not really sure how I'm going to beat this on Expert and Masters. But if you guys want to see me try, then let me know in the comments section below. Also, don't forget to leave a like, comment, and maybe even consider subscribing if you enjoy the content. Thanks everyone, and enjoy the video. So on day 1, the first thing I noticed right away was that the demolitionist replaced the guide. I actually didn't mind having him instead of the guide since he did a lot more damage to monsters with his grenades. As many of you know, to start off in Terraria, you chop trees down for wood. And that's exactly what I did, but a bomb fell out of the tree, and that kind of freaked me out. I figured this was a feature for the seed, so from now on, I have to remember that bombs fall out of trees. After chopping some trees down, I went to the right and found a desert. I chopped some cacti down just in case I wanted to make some cactus armor, but I was killed by some vultures which marked my first death. I didn't want to deal with the vultures again, so I went to the left this time and found a cave. I broke a pot and a bomb came out of it. So not only do bombs fall out of trees, they also come out of pots now. So. We're in for a fun ride. I found some sapphire a bit deeper down the cave, and I actually got enough to make a hook. And hooks in this game are really useful, especially early on. I mined some ore like lead, tungsten, and gold. I also found my first life crystal as well. I made a sapphire hook, and I also upgraded my pickaxe to gold to make mining a bit more faster. I decided to teleport back and start building my house. I wanted to build it up in the air just like in my last video to not have to deal with ground monsters. On day 2, I had plenty of tungsten, so I made a full set of tungsten armor. I then continued making my house until the next day. I went to the left to see what else I could find, and there was actually a pool of lava not too far away from my house. I really like this change since now I don't have to go underground to find some. On day 3, I wanted to explore to the left, but as I was building a platform over some lava, I accidentally fell and died. I came back and found a cave which I explored for some more ores and life crystals. After I got home, I did some organizing, but I knew it was going to end up messy again. On day 4, I had no idea what I was doing. I died a bunch of times, and I was just wandering around mindlessly. I ended up just starting on my elevator, and finding some more loot and life crystals. On day 5, slime started to fall from the sky, so I went back up and started killing slimes to summon the king slime, but I couldn't kill enough to summon him. Day 6, I went to go finish my elevator, but I stepped on a pressure plate and lava poured down, and I tried to block it off, but I messed up. But I did manage to reach all the way down to hell afterwards. I also found out that I was able to mine crimson ore with just a gold pickaxe, so that was pretty cool. So from day 7 to 10, I spent the entire time mining for materials as well as for some more life crystals, since it was about time to fight the Eye of Cthulhu. I then expanded my house and made a chest room as well as more houses for NPCs. On day 12, I found two more life crystals that I needed to max out my health, and I also decorated my house with a leaf platform just to spice things up a bit. As I was chopping some trees down for wood, I got a message saying that an evil presence is watching you, which meant that the Eye of Cthulhu was about to spawn. So I quickly added some campfires down for life regeneration and I got ready for the fight. So during the fight, I thought the boss was going to do some crazy things, but that was not the case. Everything seemed normal, but I did notice that the boss was just a bit faster. I did use my tendon bow at first, but I switched to grenades after.
On day 13, I made some slime crowns to summon King Slime because I wanted the slime mount. When I summoned him, I was surprised at how huge he was, and I completely underestimated this boss. Without Hermes boots, I couldn't outrun it when it dropped below 50% of its health. I went to the underground desert after and I found Dune Rider boots. I've actually never seen these before. I mined some desert fossils and extracted them for sturdy fossils to make fossil armor. I don't usually do this, but I thought it'd be nice to change things up. The fossil armor set effect gives a 20% chance to not consume ammo and 50% for thrown items. I had a rematch with the King Slime and it was so much easier now with boots. I defeated the King Slime, but I didn't get the mount, so I had to kill him one more time. On day 15, I built an arena in the Crimson Biome since I decided to fight the Brain of Cthulhu. I thought it was going to be an easy fight, but of course it wasn't. There was definitely more of those flying eye things, and the brain itself moved a lot faster, so I ended up dying and not being able to get it to its second phase. I wasn't sure what to do at this point, so I did some mindless mining. I remembered about the Sky Islands, so I drank a gravitation potion and found one, but you wouldn't guess what I saw after I got there. The chest was locked and I needed a golden key from the dungeon to open it. On day 16, I decided to try something I've never done before, which are pylons. Pylons make traveling so much more efficient and also saves a lot of time, but you have to house NPCs specifically to their respective biome. I fought the Brain of Cthulhu again, but this time using grenades. It was a lot better than using just arrows. I also forgot I had the slime mount, so I used that as well to make dodging easier. After getting it to its second phase, I saw that its shadows were fully opaque, which makes it harder to tell which one is real. After defeating the Brain of Cthulhu, I had enough tissue sample to make the Deathbringer pickaxe to be able to mine Hellstone. I also made a full set of Crimson Armor. I had a feeling I could beat Skeletron on my first try, so I built an arena at the dungeon and summoned the boss. Skeletron was massive, just like the other bosses I've fought, so I'm just going to assume all bosses have an increase in size. I guess I didn't mind this since landing hits on them were a lot easier.
After defeating Skeletron, I'm able to access the dungeon. I noticed a lot more spikes and the monsters there did so much damage. I figured I wasn't ready to explore it just yet, so I teleported back home. I got tired of using recall potions, so I went underground and found a magic mirror. Afterwards, I went down to hell to break some pots for potions and hellfire arrows. I also mined some hellstone. I needed obsidian to craft hellstone bars, so I made an obsidian generator. With the hellstone bars, I made the molten fury, molten pickaxe, and also the imp staff. From days 19 to 23, I spent a really long time building a bridge to fight Wall of Flesh because I had to deal with so many monsters at the same time. After finishing the bridge, it was time to fight Wall of Flesh. So like the other bosses, there was an increase in size for the hungries, but the eyes and mouth were definitely smaller and they were able to separate really far apart. I ran out of platforms so I had to hook onto the ceiling while running away. I felt like I was able to defeat it but I accidentally hovered over to my magic mirror and teleported home instead of switching to my pickaxe to break the houses. On day 24, after respawning, a goblin invasion began. It wasn't really a problem but it was just kinda annoying since you don't get any drops from it at this point in the game. I remembered that a meteorite fell during my fight with Skeletron, so I went to go find it. After I found it, I mined more than I should have, and it's kind of a habit of mine, but yeah. I went back home and made the full meteorite set as well as the space gun. Now from days 25 to 31, it was just an absolute nightmare. I thought with the meteorite set and space gun, I would be able to beat Wall of Flesh, but no. It was actually so much worse. I died so many times to the point where I thought to myself, you're not going to beat this boss. Until I thought hard and realized that my accessories could definitely be upgraded. So I went back into the dungeon and I opened up a few golden chests and I found something new. It was called the red potion and apparently it gives a random 30 minute buff to your character. I also got really lucky and found the goblin tinkerer. I was only able to buy the rocket boots before he died to the monsters. So I had to build more houses for him to spawn again to buy the goblin workshop to merge accessories together. I got some golden keys earlier in the dungeon, so I went back to the sky island I found earlier and got the fledgling wings. I then went back to the dungeon and opened another golden chest to get the cobalt shield. I also found the howling bow, but I forgot to press the record button. So yeah, sorry about that. I drank my potions and summoned the wall of flesh once again. With the new upgrades, it was a breeze. Even though the Hellling Bow was highly inaccurate, I'd say it still performed better than the Molten Fury because of its fire rate.
After defeating Wall of Flesh, it felt like a 100 pound weight was lifted off my chest. That's how good it felt. I went to the Crimson to break some altars with the bone hammer I got from the boss to bless my world with new ores. There were some cobalt ores that spawned really close to me, so I mined that and made a cobalt pickaxe to mine the next tier of ore, which was Mithro. I did mine more cobalt ore along the way for a quick upgrade from my crimson armor, since I am now in hard mode and I'm gonna need as much armor as possible. After making the mithril pickaxe, I then mined titanium ore. I usually go to hell to find ores since there's always some sort of case system, and it's always better to find one than to make your own. But I was interrupted by a hollowed mimic. It took me quite a while trying to kill it since my weapons were still considered pre-hard mode. I was hoping for the Daedalus Stormbow, but instead I got the Flying Knife. After that, I continued mining for Titanium. I found a cave system that led me to the jungle, and I found a bee's nest. I made an arena to fight the Queen Bee, hoping that there was a better weapon I've never seen before. The boss was more difficult than I imagined, but I still beat it in the end. On day 39, I wanted to farm some souls of night, but apparently it couldn't be farmed in hell, so I had to move to another place. It's weird, because I always did this before, but I guess it changed in this mode. I moved to an underground cavern, and that's when souls of night started dropping. After the queen bee was defeated, it allowed the witch doctor to spawn which was the last NPC I needed for the jungle pylon. I didn't know how it worked at first, but I figured it out later on. Uh, I needed to make more houses in all the other biomes for their own pylons, and then they would all be connected. So that's pretty much what I did on day 40. I built another house in the hollowed biome. After building the house, I went to the underground hollowed and found a gelatin crystal to summon the queen slime. I really wanted to defeat her for the flying slime mount. The fight was going really well and all, because I could just use the flying knife and attack her from a distance, but as soon as she hit her second phase, it was all over. She was way too fast for me, and the amount of slimes she summoned were too much for me to handle. After I respawned, I made the mechanical worm because I was going to fight the destroyer. I knew I wasn't going to beat it first try, but it was more of a limit test for me to see where I was at. As I waited for night to fall, I farmed some more souls of night to make the mechanical boss summons just in case I fail a bunch of times. I then made a little box in the sky where the destroyer hopefully wouldn't reach me. I was going to use my yo-yo for the fight, but I realized how much better the flying knife would be, so I used that instead, but I did too much damage and summoned way too many probes, which screwed me over. On day 42, I wanted to upgrade my cobalt armor to titanium, but I didn't have enough materials, so I went underground to mine some more. After searching for a while, it seemed like there was none to be found, so I broke some more altars to spawn more of them.
I went back down and there were a lot more. I mined enough to make the full titanium set which spawns titanium shards around me that deals damage to monsters whenever I land a hit. When I got back up, there was a pirate invasion. Like the goblin invasion, it's pretty much useless, although it did give a decent amount of gold, so I guess it wasn't all that bad. When I went to collect the gold on the ground, all the parrots that got stuck flew in on me, and I just got destroyed. On day 44, I farmed more souls of light to make another mechanical worm to summon the destroyer. I tried a different approach for this fight. Instead of just dealing as much damage as I can, I'm gonna deal enough for maybe one or two probes to spawn, kill them and then repeat the process. I do have to be careful though, do not take too long. During the fight, I got really satisfied. You know those videos where people carve soap and stuff like that? Yeah, I'm basically doing the same thing. Just running my flying knife throughout the body of the destroyer. After defeating the destroyer, I now have some hollow bars and souls of might. The souls of might will be used to make the mega shark, but I needed some more shark fins, so I hooked up a shark statue with some wires. I had to wait for night to fall to buy illegal gun parts from the arms dealer, so I made some more houses in the snow biome and the ocean for more pylons. When it turned night, I bought the gun parts and made the mega shark. I also made two more houses in the desert and underground. I had to break most of the houses at the main base to get the forest pylon, so that's why there's only three houses left, but now I can teleport pretty much anywhere. I expanded my garden to get different materials for potions. I actually never realized how useful potions are until you guys told me to use them more often, so shout out to you guys. I made some crystal bullets from crystal shards that I farmed in the underground hollowed and decided to have a rematch with the queen slime. With the mega shark, new armor, and new accessories, I felt pretty confident doing this fight. But it did manage to get me to a pretty low HP, so I had to teleport back home hoping it wouldn't despawn. But it did. I'm gonna have to try the queen slime later, but for now, it's time to fight the twins. I actually didn't really notice any change at all during this fight. It felt the same just like in any other mode.
After defeating the twins, I immediately summoned Skeletron Prime, seeing that the moon hasn't reached the midway point yet. In the first, like, 10 seconds, I got so surprised because you know how Skeletron Prime tosses bombs that don't break blocks? Yeah, well, now they do. So after realizing this, I dragged it as far away from my house as possible. Thankfully, it didn't ruin my house, just the platforms. However, it did destroy the house I made in the hollowed. On the night of day 48, I fought the twins again for some more hollowed bars because I wanted to upgrade my titanium armor set to hollow armor. The hollow armor set effect allows me to dodge the next attack and gain a few seconds of invincibility. After making the armor, I summoned Skeletron Prime again. The only reason why I got destroyed so fast last time was because it took me by surprise with the bombs. This time I summoned it away from the house. I was going to beat it, but I got worried of the next day coming. When it reaches 4.30am, Skeletron will despawn, so I had my eyes focused on the time rather than the boss, which resulted in my death. On day 49, another goblin invasion started. Now that I'm in hard mode, the goblin summoner is able to spawn. And they can drop some pretty cool weapons like the shadow flame hextal, knife, and bow. But I ended up not getting any of them. At night, I summoned Skeletron Prime once again, but this time I drank a lot of potions. I drank two red potions that gave six random buffs and also life regen and iron defense potions. I accidentally brought the boss to the hollowed biome where my houses were, so that got destroyed. So Skeletron Prime has been defeated, which meant that we're now able to make the pickaxe axe with all three souls from the mechanical bosses and mine Chlorify in the jungle. On day 50, I mined a lot of Chlorify, but I wasn't going to use them on anything just yet. I decided I was going to do a ranged class instead of my usual mage, so we're going to save the Chlorify to make Shroomite bars. Day 51, I went to the mushroom biome to farm some glowing mushrooms and glowing mushroom seeds. I placed some mud blocks on the surface and planted the seeds to turn the surface into a mushroom biome. This is needed for the truffle to spawn and the truffle sells the auto hammer that can be used to make the shroomite bars. I also found some truffle worms so I grabbed them real quick before they dug away. As you can see, the background has now been changed to a mushroom background. That's how you know when the truffle is able to spawn into the house. After building the house, the truffle NPC spawned within seconds, but it doesn't sell the auto hammer yet. I have to defeat Pantera first. I went back to the jungle and found a Pantera bulb close by, so I threw dynamite everywhere to clear some space to build an arena. I built a small house with a bed and some honey. There were some people that said using the nurse ruins the experience, so I took that into account for this video. And believe it or not, I have not used the nurse for any bosses. I'm only building this to teleport back and run through some honey for health regen. From days 54 to 60, I was searching through the whole jungle to find life fruits, but they seemed so rare this time. I was only able to find about two before I gave up.
On day 61, I spent the whole time fishing for some crimson fish to make potions. On day 62, I began the fight with Plantera. The rate the petals shot out were definitely much faster, and also, whenever I hovered on top of Plantera, it would accelerate towards me. When it got to its second phase, I noticed that the tentacles were at a fixed position rather than it swinging. I got pretty close to killing it, but I ended up failing. The next day, I tried again, but this time I cleared much more space around me to maneuver better. So after defeating Plantera, I ended the recording and I forgot to turn it back on. I did do some things that are worth mentioning, so I'll explain. After Plantera died, the truffle was able to sell the auto hammer, so I bought that and used my chlorophyte bars with glowing mushrooms to make shroomite bars, and I used the shroomite bars to make shroomite armor. It basically increases your damage and makes you go into the stealth mode if you stood in one place. So yeah, back to the video. I made an arena for Duke of Restaurant, but I wasn't going to fight him yet. I still had to beat the Queen Slime. So on day 64, I had my third rematch with her. And with all the new upgrades, I should be able to beat her, right? From days 65 to 67, I farmed at the dungeon for some items to make the Master Ninja Gear. The Master Ninja Gear lets you dash, so it's pretty essential if you want to dodge better. It also gives a chance for you to completely negate an attack. After getting the tabbies and black belt, all I needed was the climbing claws, which can be found above the surface or just a little below inside a chest. On day 68, I drank some potions and summoned Duke Fishron, but the fight didn't last very long. Yeah. 
Yeah, I literally got two-shotted. I tried again, but the same thing happened. I needed some more health, so on day 69, I went into the jungle to find some more life fruits, but I only found two. I tried fighting Duke Fishman again, and I did a lot better, but I still died. I killed Wall of Flesh again for another emblem, and I turned that into an Avenger emblem. I'll be turning this into a Destroyer emblem later. On day 70 to 76, I went into the temple and it was all green looking, which I found pretty cool. I managed to make it to the boss room, so I made a platform and started the fight with the golem. I was surprised by how small it was, but it moved so fast and the punches were also really fast. After I died, I saw how fast the laser came out after the head was taken off its body. I decided to try again later. I fought Duke Fishrun again, but you guys know what happens. Yep, I died. I fought it once more, but this time, I'm only using the Queen Slime Mount. Jumping up and down on the mount was a lot faster than using the Master Ninja Gear's dash. Also, I didn't mention this, but I'm using the weapon I got from the jungle chest in the dungeon. It shoots out three piranhas and latches onto the enemies, so it's easier to focus on dodging. In the last half of the fight, I got used to the attack patterns. I lured the tornado to one side of the arena, and then ran all the way to the other side. By the time I reach the ends of the arena, the tornado will have disappeared. The sharks from the tornado also won't be able to reach me. I almost died here, but I was so glad I was able to beat it. Since I knew the attack patterns now, I fought him over and over again, hoping for his wings, but I never got it. I reforged my tsunami I got from Duke Fishron to Deadly. On day 77, I flattened out the hollowed biome on the surface to farm some unicorns to make holy arrows. On day 78, after making a bunch of holy arrows, I fought the golem again. With the Tsunami and Holy Arrows, my damage was insane, although the stars were missing a lot since the golem moves too fast.
fought it two more times, but then I moved the altar to the surface so I had more space to work with. I tried my luck on Duke Fishron's wings again, but I didn't get it, so I just gave up. I felt pretty good about my damage, so I tried fighting the Lunatic Cultist. It was going well and all, but I accidentally hit one of his clones, which multiplied him, and also summoned a dragon that destroyed me. On day 79, I killed the golem again because I needed an item called the Eye of the Golem that gives crit chance. I was running low on holy arrows, so I killed some more unicorns. I fought the destroyer again, just for fun. I just wanted to see how much damage I did. I summoned the Frostmoon because I wanted the chain gun that dropped from Santa and K1s, but they were really tanky, so I ended up killing only a few. I also couldn't manage to get to the wave where Ice Cream spawned. On day 80, I went back to the dungeon to kill skeleton snipers because they dropped the rifle scope that I wanted. It lets you see more at the end of your screen, so it's pretty useful for Moonlord to see when he does his laser beam. I fought the Lunatic Cultist again, but I'll be switching through my Mega Shark and Toonami. I use the Mega Shark with Chlorophyte bullets for whenever he splits because the bullets track the real one, and then switching back to the Tsunami for more damage. After defeating the Lunatic Cultist, I went straight for the Vortex Pillar. I destroyed the pillar and got some Vortex Fragments that I used to make the Vortex Beetle. I waited until night to summon the Empress of Light, and when I did, well things went horribly wrong. I ate pretty much all the attacks and I even fell in lava multiple times.
After I died, I quickly head over to the hollowed biome and caught two more lacewings, and then the next night I summoned the Empress of Light once again. From days 82 to 88, I fought the Empress of Light and it went a lot better this time, since there was no lava or uneven ground to mess me up. I did however fail again. I tried and tried until I was finally able to beat her. After the Empress of Light was defeated, I destroyed the solar pillar and then I wanted to make the Ankh shield. But I spent so long trying to farm for vitamins in the underground crimson, but I just couldn't get it. Vitamins dropped from floaty gross with a 1% drop rate, so it wasn't a surprise for me not to get it. After giving up on the Ankh shield, I destroyed the nebula pillar and then the stardust pillar to summon Moonlord. Moonlord has finally been defeated, and we're about to reach the end of this journey. So for the remaining days, I killed Moonlord a quote unquote few more times, and made the Vortex armor set. We've reached the end everyone. Thank you all for watching and experiencing this journey with me. I'd appreciate it if you guys could drop a like, comment, and maybe even consider subscribing if you guys like the content. Also let me know what video you guys would like to see next. This is Necro and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.